Hello friends, welcome back, or if you're new here, welcome. This is the channel where I build and paint plastic scale models and talk about them, I guess. We painted up the interior last time, so today we're going to put some more paint on the exterior of this aircraft. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. First things first, before applying any paint or primer to the model, it's a good practice to wipe down the entire thing with some isopropyl alcohol. This will remove any greasy fingerprints or dust from handling the model and help the paint and primer adhere to the plastic. Then I spray the interior color over the canopy to simulate its interior painting. Next up, primer. I'm a big fan of ammo one-shot primer. It's an acrylic primer, so it's not as toxic to spray as lacquer primers, but it sands just as well. It comes airbrush ready in the bottle, and it just has to be sprayed at a high pressure, around 30 psi. This was seriously one of the best fitting model kits I've ever put together. So glad I didn't have to use any filler for the gaps. There are only two spots where I had to sand down the joint seams and reprime them. And just for context, I have not built Tamiya's new P38 which is considered the best fitting model kits in existence, so I'd imagine that would go together even smoother than this one. Now, a great way to add variation to a paint job is black basing, or I guess brown basing in this case. Anyway, we need to spray white paint in a random fashion over a dark primer to create these random splotches. This can be done either with airbrushing fine squiggles over the surface, or if you're lazy like me, you can use these splatter stencils. After the model looks like some arctic jaguar or something, we can start spraying the main colors. I'll be using these AK Real Color lacquer paints because they offer precise shades for various military colors that may otherwise be hard to mix by yourself. Starting off with RLM 65 to paint the undersurface. It is very important to keep the paint thin and build up the color in thin layers to keep the paint finish smooth and not cover up the black basing underneath or any surface details on the plastic. I mix paint and thinner by eye and feel, thus I don't know the precise ratio, but I think it was something like 60 to 40% thinner to paint ratio. This color covers the bottom surfaces and the sides of the fuselage. Next up, the splinter camo, starting with the lighter color. As a general rule, always spray the lighter shades first, followed by the darker ones. Light paint sprayed over a dark paint will have a darker and more dull hue than it's supposed to be. This is especially important in smaller scales, where colors have to be kept lighter than on large scale models to make the model seem bigger than it actually is. The splinter camo is a little complicated, to say the least, so I painted it in two stages. First, the spine and the tail, then the wings. The camo had a very specific pattern most of the time, so it's important to take your time in masking everything correctly. Unfortunately, I got a little paint bleed and overspray in some areas, so I had to do some respraying, which covered up most of the black basing underneath. It was only left visible on the blue surfaces in RLM 65. That's something I didn't really account for. So it was a great learning experience for me, to leave room for fixing any mistakes so that you won't compromise the finish. Following the same rule with lighter colors, I sprayed the yellow spinner and engine cowling. Yellow over a layer of white to make it pop more. Then the wheel wells in RLM02, the same color we used in the interior. I also took care of the landing gear at this stage. I don't know why, I just wanted to get them out of the way. The interior side was painted with RLM02 like everything else, and the exterior with RLM65. Speaking of the wheels, those had some ejector pin marks that had to be filled with putty before painting the non-tire part black. The propeller was first sprayed with RLM70, and then the blades were masked off to spray the mountings in AK Extreme Metal Aluminum. After this, the propeller and spinner were carefully glued together and set aside to attach at a later stage. I wanted to put the model on its legs, so I glued the landing gear into the wheel walls. Props to Tamiya for this kit engineering over here, as the locating holes are rectangular, so it was really easy to get the landing gear geometry correct. Once the wheels were attached as well, I painted the tires in Vallejo dark grey, as grey is a lot more of a convincing rubber colour than pure black. 
Additionally, there will be some contrast between the grey tires and the black middle section of the wheels. Now for the main events of this build. My chosen color scheme had these small squiggles all over the fuselage which I wasn't sure how to approach at first. I don't have the skills to airbrush this tight pattern, and I tried applying the paint with a sponge on the other side, but that didn't work. I wasn't trying to order a painting mask for a small out of the box build like this either, so brush painting seemed like the only viable solution. I used the Vallejo Model Air version of RLM 71, but I had to lighten it up a bit so it would be a closer match to the airbrushed color. Patience is your best friend here. It was very intimidating at first, I'm not gonna lie, to paint randomly shaped splotches in a tight pattern, but once my hand got used to the random motions that I had to take, the painting turned out a lot easier. And surprisingly fast, I think each side took me, I don't know, 45 minutes to complete? There are two big spots of color near the wing roots where the concentration of squiggles has to be gradually increasing, which I think was the hardest part of the paint job. But like I said, patience and some drying retarder in your paint are your best friends if you want to try something like this. I think it's very important to always try to get out of your comfort zone and challenge yourself. We as modelers often find a set of techniques that we are comfortable with and get stuck in these ruts where we're afraid to try new and intimidating builds or painting techniques. With every model I build, I aim to try out something I haven't done or focus on one specific technique to hone down, which helps me discover new approaches and ways of thinking about a project and ultimately improve my build in the long run. So after a huge sigh of relief, the model was ready for clear varnish and decals. Now, Tamiya decals don't really have a good reputation. Some people go as far as always replacing them with aftermarket ones, but surprisingly, they worked out pretty well in this build. I think the key with a lot of Tamiya decals is to use more aggressive setting solutions, in my case, Mr. Mark Saturn Softer, and crease them into the panel lines to make sure they trace the surface perfectly. If the clear film has still not melted well into the surface, you can always spray a thick layer of gloss varnish over them and then gently sand down the varnish with a soft sanding sponge. Now let's seal the decals with another layer of clear varnish and give the model a quick pin wash to end the video and prepare for weathering. I find it incredibly important to use the right wash color for the model and use different colors on different base coats. For light blue surfaces, this dark blue enamel wash is a perfect choice, as it isn't very dark, but it is enough to contrast the light colored base coat in a harmonious way. Whether you're using enamels or oils for this effect, they both take at least a few hours to fully dry, so once the paint is dry to the touch, it could be removed with a brush damped in enamel thinner. Here's the difference between the wing with a wash applied, versus a wing with no wash. The upper surfaces received a green-gray wash and the yellow parts a dark brown. Personally, I don't consider a pin wash a weathering effect. It could definitely be one, uh, for example if you're applying oil paints as a sludge wash, but in most cases I consider it just as another essential painting technique on any model. The real weathering, aka dust, grime, stains, and leaks will be done in the next and final episode of the series. I'd say the model is turning out pretty good so far, and the hand-painted camouflage on the sides is the most interesting part of the model right now in my opinion, with the humble paintbrush ending up being the MVP of the paint job. But what do you guys think? Leave your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to leave me a like if you enjoyed. Of course, click that subscribe button if you want to see the conclusion of this build in your feed. Thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. And I invite you to check out my Instagram and Facebook pages, where I post in progress pictures and other builds which do not make it to this YouTube channel. Thank you for watching, and I will see you all next time. Peace.